Hi there, it's Jack, and today this is going to be a bit of a different video. I have recently get, been getting into CD collecting and record collecting, so I'm just going to be giving you guys some tips on how to manage it and what has been working for me so far. So yeah, let's get right into it. So starting with CDs, this is the like sort of music listening thing that I originally started out with. I got into it maybe about August of 2023 and I still kind of collect them to this day. And I think it's a very excellent way to start collecting music because it's very cheap. Like generally you would get $20 for one album and you have like all of those songs with it. So like it's a pretty good deal. And apart from vinyls, they are very simple to use. You just plop them into the CD player, put the number for whatever number track you want to play and it will play it. It's just as simple as that. And what I also did when I first started getting into CDs was I bought a cheap CD player. I literally just went to the thrift store. Luckily they had it at this time and because you might not always find everything you need at a thrift store. Um, but yeah, I did end up finding one that was maybe for like five, ten bucks and it's very simple to get. You don't need to get anything too special or nice, it's just, it plays music, it does the job. So when you're first collecting CDs, there can be two different almost styles of CDs you can collect. So there's the general case for it, I think this is like a diamond, I, it might be called a diamond case or like something along those lines, but it's just the generic, I'm sure you've seen it before when you open it up, if I will. It's just, it's like a little book and it has most likely a lyric booklet inside and then the actual CD disc. If you get any scratches on the CD or any like tape that you got stuck on it, it will not be able to be used, which absolutely sucks. And the other one, this is the other kind I have, where it's an actual book, which is kind of cool. And where the lyric booklet is just the actual book, and then at the end of this, I don't even know what style it is, the CD is in this little pocket right here, which is kind of cool. So you can take it out and kind of show the world, you know? And I... I just dropped that. Okay, cool. So those are the like main types of CDs that I really know of, but there might be different casings out there I just haven't really discovered yet. And moving on to vinyl, or what some people call records. Um, brief introduction to it, it's, it's a bit of a different terminology. When you're referring to like some of the actual disc things, it can either be LP, album, record, most likely not going to be called vinyls. But you can call the entire like genre of music listening thing a vinyl. But I would definitely recommend if you are thinking of getting into records to buy only the albums that you are really into, not songs that you barely know and just want to get into for the fun of it. Because records are extremely expensive, they're probably double the price compared to CDs. Or if you're buying them from online, it's shipping and that could get to like $80, which is absolutely insane. And the very sad part of it is when you first get out and try and buy records and then put them onto your record player, some of the songs might not work, which is just the worst realization ever, even when some of your favorite songs are on there and you can't play them. Because the thing with records is they skip some songs and they can just go on repeat the phrase sounding like a broken record, that is from this. <laughs> and what kind of separates these from the CDs is the upkeep and constant like cleaning of these records, because if you get them dusty then it will not be able to play them, because it'll just scratch over the dust and that can also damage your record. So what you have to do, what I actually just got was a brush, like a vinyl brush for them. Let me show you what it looks like. I literally just got this today. So it kind of helps, so when you put the record on and play it, it actually cleans it. So that is very helpful, so that there's no dust or debris that the needle like gets onto. And most likely when you do go to a record store to buy these records, the person at the register will give you a plastic like record sleeve that's a cover for it. If you're ever buying off Amazon or a musician's website, they will probably not give you one but it is highly recommended because it just keeps everything in place. Like these can be damaged very quickly, so just keeping them as safe as possible is the best option for them. And now that we're along the lines of keeping them safe, what we also have to no take notice of is how we store them. You cannot store them horizontally like on your desk or anything. The extra weight of stacking the vinyls on top of each other will cause some of them to warp and stick together and it is just really not good for it. 
So storing it vertically in your desk or your somewhere is very beneficial. I'll show you a clip, probably showing it right now, of where it is in my desk. And now let's move on to what I actually use my records for. That makes no sense. <laughs> uh, let me move on to introducing you to my record player. Here is my record player. This is the Crossley suitcase style player, and it's more on the cheaper side compared to others. Quality wise, it could be better, and there's reports of people saying it scratches the records over time, but it's a good starting one if you really want to get into record playing. And here I'm just kind of demonstrating how putting a record works onto this player, and then a little demonstration of the music. I just realized I'll get filed for copyright if I do that. Sorry guys. Here is just some brief information overall of what you should be doing with your records and CDs collecting them. Uh, so I would say the biggest thing is to budget your money because it can get crazy expensive when I'm doing this. So I've just spent literally today $70 on just one record and the brush cleaner. So I would budget my money. So I've spent that. That's all I'm going to spend this month for crazy expensive buying things. And so just, yeah, budget your money, do whatever you can to make sure you're not going into debt because it is a very expensive hobby to get into. And speaking of budgeting your money, also do not buy the higher end record cleaners or record player, starting with one, I believe this is less than $100, the Crossley record player. It does the job. It might scratch it over in the future, but when you are out of university or any situation where you have to pay money a lot every single month, then you can buy a more expensive one, but right now just a cheap one does the job and it's totally fine. And one of the reasons why I have loved so much buying records and CDs is it lets me kind of get to know the artists a little more in the albums that they put out. Because when I first got, say, the Lover CD by Taylor Swift, I only knew half of the songs, half of the more popular ones, but I got into some of the ones that I have never listened to and I just love them to bits. So it just really expands your music knowledge when it comes to the artists that you love and it's just an incredible way to almost spend your time. That's why I love collecting these so much and listening to them. Alrighty, so that is all the tips I had for today. My camera is about to die so I have to say goodbye. Hope you learned something from this and I'll see you guys later. Bye!